you for being here. I appreciate your time. Today we are going to be dividing my Fred Clark Yara After Dark Black Pearl. And good news, you can see it is getting started. It wants to start the season out. First new growth is right here. I say good news because that is great. It is responding to daylight. For me, it's bad news. I would have preferred to attack this division before I see anything like this happening because the odds of popping this off while you're being radical with the orchid are very, very high. And also because there's another one tucked back here, teeny tiny one in the back end trying to come out. And yeah, chances are they're gonna break off. However, <laughs> We are early enough in the season that if I pop these off, then it will recover because of the division and it'll find another point of growth. I would rather leave them on. So I have this time been soaking this orchid. She has a potion of cow mag in there only. Not necessarily that she needs it at this point in time, but I do want to loosen the root ball this time around. Also because if I do do some damage, at least it has a little bit of strength to draw on when it has to start all over again with another new growth. So there's a few things going on as to why now I've got Calmax soaking in here. I don't necessarily need to save the pot. It's broken already. I could literally go in with the secateurs, but because I had to destroy the other previous pot when I did the Jack of Diamonds cleanup and division, I want to see if this will help me out for future reference in case I tackle another Catacetinae that is pot bound and has been in its pot for probably four years now. Anyway, enough of the jibber jabber. Let's see if we can't get in there without doing too much damage to the new growths. I'm not concerned about the roots. Well, it's looking much better and much easier than the other one did. There's a lot more lecker coming out of this one prior. That's great. Let's see if I can just pull it out. Wouldn't that be great? No, but what I can do at this point is try and get my secateurs in there and just shave off the bulbs that I can get at. See if that works. Nope, I don't like the angle that I'm coming in at. I don't know if there's more lecker in there. So we're not even gonna take the hammer, seeing as the pot is already history on one side. I shall be cutting the pot off. There we go. It was a little bit easier. The pot was bigger, that helped a lot as well. And the orchid wasn't as pot bound around the perimeter, so the hammer could actually get in and dislodge a few things. All right, this should be relatively easy from here on in. Just enough, you know, hacking away to remove the old roots now, normally, if this orchid wasn't going to be divided and had had plenty of space in the pot, I wouldn't be hacking away at the roots. I would just leave them and cultivate them in my setup of lecker and self-watering for the next season. As you can see, years and years and years. And the orchid has not been repotted at all. She's just running out of space in the back here. Just have to be very careful when it comes to the dividing part that I make sure that I don't damage any bulbs and leave enough for successful growing on of the new owners. Yes, because I'm going to divide her into two. I have lots and lots of back bulbs here with the new growth coming. There's a lot of support here for the orchid to grow. I've got two more beautifully sizable pseudobulbs right here. 
makes a great division. And then I'll be keeping the front part, which is this bit. Just have to be careful because the structures, although they feel tough, they are fleshy and can get damaged quite easily. Got an eye on the growth back there. There we go. We've done a little bit of damage on that one bulb, that nothing that cinnamon can't fix. There we go. The front has been dislodged. We still have the growth. Woohoo! Thank goodness for that. All right, now let's be just as prudent with the next step and get further back because we need to apply cinnamon to this little damaged part here. And I apologize for any background noise that I will not be able to edit out because I've got things happening beyond the hedge and I'm right in the middle of what I'm doing and I just can't stop. <laughs> Once again, the fragrance is amazing. Roots being intact. It smells like freshly cut grass. See that I can separate this lot here. Got to try and get into the middle. But I want to see what I'm doing, what I'm up against first. So I might give that a little bit of a clean up and get a better idea of where we're going in. be a shame to do damage to these two bulbs here because they are very very good for growing on this all looks a little bit tight here hmm while i ponder while i ponder this i'm going to go and get some cinnamon and what I was just looking at, you see, they might be fleshy and tough. Sorry about that. But you see that there? A teeny tiny seedling bulb. Yeah, so small I didn't see it. And it just popped off the top. So these guys, you know, they might look heavy duty, but hmm, they are, they're fragile. So I'm going to get some cinnamon and deal with those wounds while I work and try and divide these pieces. We can be liberal. <laughs> No need to protect any roots here, seeing as they're all coming off. Just need to protect the wound created by the division. That's one. We want to make sure we protect that one as well in there for eventualities. Okay. Now. With any other division, I'd be putting my sprayer into that area so that I can get a clear visual of what's going on. But seeing as this orchid is coming out of dormancy, I don't want to affect that growth. Okay, woohoo! There we go. Like cutting through a chicken thigh or something. You find the bone where all the cartilage is and it's really easy to slice through. You find the point on the rhizome of the bulbs. It's really easy to slice through as well. You find a point of resistance, then you're not at the ideal point of the rhizome. So at, instead of just proceeding and hoping for the best, stop and start again and find that weak spot. Easily also done. When you, you know, like I just did, I maneuvered it around, jiggled it around just to see where the easy point is, where it's going to give first. And we have our second piece. Then we can add some more cinnamon in here. There we go. And now all that I need to do for this piece is remove it from the root ball. 
Whoa, it's already starting on roots. We'll have to work with that. I'll show you just now. Let me dislodge this. Just below the pseudobulbs, do not get too close to them. There's no need to be the Figaro. The idea is protect the bulbs above. Just leave enough of the root system to give you that buffer. There's no need to go all the way close and be so precise. There we go. Root ball and Fred Clark Yara 3.0 has been relieved. And you can see, look at that. Isn't that awesome? Sorry for my cinnamon covered fingers. Ooh, I love it. Right. I would normally like to clean all that up, but the health of this little growth with the new roots is paramount. It's got plenty to work with. I'm telling you, some nurseries will send you something like this and only with the last two bulbs of any kind of growth, they would continue to pop this off and divide it and divide it. I have a weak spot right here. Nurseries would probably pop that off, divide it and sell you the front two parts for a load of money and then good luck with trying to get them to grow on because you see there's more points of growth that could swell up right here, but a nursery will take advantage of that and just, you know, give you what they have and then sell this bulb individually and they'll sell it with a new growth coming, exorbitant prices, you get my point. Anyway, this is gonna be one piece to give the new owner a proper chance. And I'm going to clear up my little workstation because I need to be doing some potting up for at least the division that I'm keeping. So if you're interested, stick around. These look really, really good. These can just lie around and wait. And then let's update on the Jack of Diamonds as well. Before we move on to the update of the Jack of Diamonds, this was all a bit fiddly, three bulbs, super heavy. My intention was to get the LECA and self-watering system in place ahead of time so that the LECA beads can now dry out until such a time that this new growth grows new roots. I don't want anything wet touching those roots until they are not very well established in the pot. 
Now this gives me plenty of time to achieve that. Once the growth starts to grow new roots and seeing that it is really low in the pot, I couldn't raise it up any higher because the weight of these bulbs keeps dropping the bulbs back down the stake. So I've used a little bit more lecker in the back to prop it up. It is not ideal, but for the time being, it's the best I can do without slicing my bulb that I'm using as an attachment into half. Depending on how this growth progresses, my plan is to raise the bulbs up periodically so that the roots can go lower and lower and get the orchid to the right height. Should I not be successful with that, seeing as the weight is going to increase the bigger this new growth gets, then so be it. It is in the pot at the height that it is. Being that the orchid is a bit of a climber, I mean, you know, it's not that big a deal if it's a little bit lower in the pot. Ideally, I would like it higher. We'll just have to wait and see. As it is wobbly, it is now going to go indoors into a location where I will not have to move it unless I am periodically going to raise the bulbs. Now, let's get to the Jack of Diamonds because I used exactly the same system and let's see how that one's coming along. Here's the division that has yet to be sent to its new owner. Everything's looking fine and it's starting a new growth, which is perfect. And the system there you can see, like with the after dark black pearl. I have it suspended above the pot. The pseudobulbs have absolutely not shriveled and we're starting a new growth in the back. So this one is in an ideal position height wise because it was lighter, the pseudobulbs aren't as heavy and it doesn't keep slipping down on the stake for me. Anyway, we're in business with the Jack of Diamonds it is on the move. So I hope that you enjoyed this little bit of a pull apart, tear apart, clean up apart <laughs> of my Fred Clark Yara After Dark Black Pearl. It is about to start raining. I don't mean to rush through this video. So if I am kind of cutting it short and you have any questions, the comments are there for a reason. Let's continue the dialogue. I appreciate your time very, very much. Thank you so much for watching. Wishing you a beautiful day. On that one condition though, that you do stay safe, please. I'd love to see you in the next video. Take care, bye.